I think we are live. Hello. Hey, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Virtual Write-In, part two. I only see part two. <laughs> um, it's not really part two, but this is the second virtual write-in that we've done in March to get ready for Camp Nanorama, which is Yay. starting in six days in April. Um, and we're excited to come back to see you all. I recognize some same names in the chat <clears throat> and you might recognize our faces. We had a really fun time doing this with you last week and we're super excited to do it this week as well. So I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm Mariah. I'm one of the directors of programs at NaNoWriMo and I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm Catherine. I'm the communications manager at NaNoWriMo and I'm she, her, or they, them. Hi guys, I am Jordan. I'm the editorial intern here at NaNoWriMo and I use he, him. Perfect. And if you would like to drop in the chat as well, maybe um, you can drop in where you're writing from. That's always, I always like seeing that. <clears throat> we get people from all over the world, which is really cool. I'm here in Oakland, California. Um, or if you wanted to maybe drop in one word about how you're feeling about camp. I love this one word challenge. So if you <laughs> want to, like, if I had to drop in one word about how I'm feeling about camp right now, I, it would probably be, probably be what? With like a couple of question marks and an exclamation point. <laughs> That's my one word about camp. Um, do either of you have a one word feeling about camp? <laughs> Marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, I think I'm with you, Mariah. I think I would just be like, now? <laughs> yeah, it would be like an emoji that's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my one word. <laughs> um, so we have a lot going on, actually. And I'll just, I'll say a couple of things before we get started in this virtual write-in. Um, so like we said, Camp NaNoWriMo is coming no idea what that is. You should see probably a link in the description below the video. You can find out more about that. Um, we also have the special track for Camp NaNoWriMo this April that's all about finishing a novel that you've already started. So a lot of people start novels in NaNoWriMo in November, get to 50,000 words, but not the end of their story. So if you're interested in Nano Finmo, see what we did there, you can probably click the link that might also be, we'll make sure it's in the description. And we also have um, this group matchmaking event. Event? It's not really an event. Basically, on our website, you can get in writing groups with other people, and you can find your own with people you know or find people in the forums. But if you're feeling a little shy and would like us to match you, um, we have a form right now that you can fill out with some um, criteria, and we can try to help you get set up with a, a random group. And that can probably be linked in the video as well. And then if you're interested in more videos like this or keeping up to date on all the happenings on, at NaNoWriMo, you can um, click subscribe button, which I think is our, you can click the Viking helmet, which is below our faces right now, and it will subscribe you to our channel. And we will not spam you. We will only make the best, most wonderful videos about writing <laughs> like this. Always. Obviously. Oh, very highly produced. <laughs> full production team as you can clearly see i'm definitely not sitting on my floor in front of my bookcases like <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just the best light that i have in the house and like the best and i used to move like a desk in front of it to do this and then i was like well whatever i'm just gonna sit on the floor they don't know <laughs> oh, you tell them yeah now you know okay <laughs> so we are and so jordan you're new is this your first virtual writing <laughs> It is my first virtual write-in as a participant on screen. <laughs> but you've been to them before as a participant behind the screen. That's great. Yeah. Um, so some of you, I'm probably most of you have been to a virtual write-in, but if this is your first, um, what we're going to do is hour together writing and talking about writing and just being weird, quirky, wonderful um, writers together. So this is your chance to take a break out of your normal day, whatever that looks like, and really set aside time to nourish your creativity and your project, whatever that is. So you might come with us, to us with like a project you're working on and you can use that time to work on it. Or you might come and you're like, I'm not working on anything, but I just wanna practice my creative writing muscle. And so we're here for that too. We'll do three writing prompts and we'll do some sprints. So we'll write for five minutes or 10 minutes or eight minutes together. And then we'll have some time to share as well. Before we get started in our first um, prompt, 
and looking at some of the words people have shared. So we've got um, Kathy from Pennsylvania, whose word is sluggish. <laughs> I feel that too. Oliver um, said uh, giddy. Thank you, Ms. D. Giddy. We've got Kelsey from Vancouver, whose word is overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got Kate, who says panic in all capital letters. <laughs> Very relatable. Very relatable. We've got Hallo from Deutschland. So, <laughs> Hallo, Jess. Um, I used to do street shows with my husband, like circus street shows. And then we had to memorize stuff in German because we were performing in Germany. So, all of my German is like, like, come and see here. In, I can't even remember, but it was like, come <laughs> into the ring, please, if you are a strong man or stuff like that. Or like, if you're wearing a hat, please step into the ring. It was really silly. Or mock the week, which means like, do what I do. You could use that. Do what I do so in the you, writing. I'm probably saying it all wrong, so I apologize. <laughs> um, okay. So let's get started. Um, the very first prompt, this, so first of all, the theme for this write-in is all about smells. Um, this is the smelliest virtual write-in we've ever done. <laughs> and so our very first prompt about smells is um to and okay and the reason i picked smells isn't just to make a funny smell like smelly joke which i was looking forward to making <laughs> um, and i wanted to title this virtual write-in the smelliest virtual write-in ever but the reason i picked it is because we we know as writers um how important it is to like set the scene for our readers and we do a lot of we you know we talk about the five senses and i feel personally i feel very comfortable often including sight cues, you know, colors, things like that, um, sounds also. But I feel like smell is the one that, one, is kind of one of the more powerful, interesting scents to include, and also the one that's a little trickier to to work in. And I'll, I'll notice, I'll read a whole story of mine and be like, oh, there was nothing, nothing smell. <laughs> Where in real life, like, we spend a lot of time smelling things, and it's, it really affects us as humans. Um, so that's why we're focusing on smells. So for this first five minute warm up, um, right about the time you or your character, if you have a character in mind, smelled the worst or best scent ever. And at first I only had this be the worst scent. And then I was like, uh, fine, we'll, we'll not be characters <laughs> today. And we'll say, you could also write about the best scent. Um, I thought to, you were going to say right about the time your character smelled the worst or best. Sure. Yeah, you could. That could be it. You could. Maybe that's like. That could be an interesting one too. Yeah. Alternate prompt. Um, the mm -hmm. time your character or you smelled the worst. <laughs> um, or the worst smell your character ever smelled. The worst smell you ever smelled. Or the best. This is just a warm up. Um, and if you hate any all of these prompts, feel free to write about anything you choose. But we're gonna do five minutes. Um, we'll drop that. I think probably we already dropped that prompt in the chat. If you yeah. reading it. Do you have a do you have a timer or do you want me to do it? Oh shoot. I have one, I have one right here, so I can do it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I could just count down from <laughs> <laughs> I used to art model and I used to try to try to count how many how much time was passing as I was just standing there doing nothing. But... Whoa. <laughs> I would love to read a story about an art model with like an art model playing character. <laughs> I really like that. Okay. All right. So problem number one. Oh, go oh, ahead. No, no, nope. you go. <laughs> Jinx. Uh -huh. Oh, I was going to get started on the prompt. So if you have something to say before we do that. No, nope, that's all. Okay. okay. Um, all right. Prompt number one, write about the time you or your character smelled the worst and or best. Um, or something they smelled that was the worst or best. It's gonna be five minutes and let's go ahead and start now.
got about a minute and a half left. Time's up. Go ahead and wrap up what you're writing. Um, if you want to share a sentence that you wrote in the prompt or maybe what the smell was or how you used the prompt, um, feel, free to, feel free to put it in the chat or you can share your word count. <clears throat> um, that was, I love writing about smells um, and I couldn't get it out of my head to write about um, the worst time I ever smelled because I don't know I thought that was really funny so <laughs> and what was interesting is that the worst time I smelled ever I think was probably um when I went backpacking for a week and I couldn't smell myself at all because you just stop smelling yourself mm -hmm. which is which is interesting and then you come out of it and then we went to a hotel and I could smell all of these other smells that were so artificial were super heightened so I could, and they were making me nauseous. Like I could smell the cleaning <laughs> fluid they'd used like in the hotel or the person's perfume that had been in the elevator before me. Um, so it was, wow. it was interesting to remember that. Um, did you, did either of you write, do the prompt or write? <laughs> what did you write about? No? Well, <laughs> um, the first thing that came to mind for me is, is just um, when I was at Berkeley uh, walking through the, hills there after a rain, you know, everything just smelled so much more strongly than usual. And it's just incredible to me. It just like brought everything to life and made me aware of, I guess, the environment a lot more than I normally am. And I just, I don't know, I felt like kind of this connectivity, you know, and it sort of, sort of made me think like about all the trees and the roots and then, you know, how everything is sort of like quietly communicating and, and they were sort of communicating with me. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I felt more like, it felt a little more tangible for some reason because the air was like damp and the smells were just like so visceral and amazing. So that was what I was writing about. That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> um, do you, people are sharing some great stuff in the chat and as they're doing that, I'm, I was wondering if, if you feel free in the chat to also answer this question, but is there a scent that you feel like you lean on really heavily in your writing or one you leave out? Um, like I think I lean pretty heavily on sight but honestly probably the one that I leave out the most is taste mm. maybe I'm not like super into food or taste or something or sometimes it's hard to work in right like mm -hmm. right like, I feel like taste is one that we don't unless their character is eating something I'm not really sure how to work that in so well yeah I, yes. so the story I'm working on right now is actually it's it's a werewolf story so I've been trying <laughs> to lean in more to smells which I don't usually do but um like they're very present in the story so this is actually this uh these props are perfect for me <laughs> going through and, and editing this story but yeah, yeah really sight, sight and hearing definitely take the are the two that I use most often yeah it's it's funny how we forget about things like eating and smelling and stuff like that uh, so quickly when it is such a big part of our days. <laughs> Maybe that's one reason why we omit it is because it's just too 
too normal and like every day and we're, we're looking for more exciting things but it is a really good way to like root your characters in in a believable sort of you know framework and make them you know just more more relatable and and you know to to have them doing things like that that really helps you kind of get into the mindset of how do i describe like what this experience is like you know something that i usually don't even think about so it's, it's really a pretty good exercise for that reason I love, I love the Katie L wrote prompt is a good reminder to think about smells, especially for a medieval city in the summertime. (laughs) I guess as soon as soon as I read that, I was like, oh man, I can (laughs) can picture what that smells like almost. (laughs) Um, We've got Leslie Mean said, Philip stripped out of his soaked woolen robes and sniffed the garment and nearly winced in pain from the musty wet smell of the wet, musty wet sheep smell of the wet wool. Mm. Um, I definitely need a bath. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at um, C. Natalie Ellen Milliken, Milliken, sorry if I mispronounced that, says, Tim Laden, all was quiet. Suddenly the fragrance of a pine forest registered on my brain, my lover. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about that, about a smell attached to certain people, like, which is something to do, but like, when I'm coming up with characters and you come up with like their pet peeves and their hobbies and their best memory, like I should come up with what they smell like too. Cause some mm-hmm. characters like always are some people in my life. It's like, you can, you know, like I live with housemates and I, I know when each of them has taken a shower because I smell the shampoo, mm-hmm. you know, that they use or whatever. Yeah. It's like, if you borrow somebody's shirt and then it just like, it smells like them just like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, CB394 says, I blinked the sandalwood, lemon, and expensive cigars too much for me. I'd forgotten how long it had been since I smelled it. That's interesting, too. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah, smells can really have strong associations with, you know, certain things and times and places, too. For sure. Um, my neuroscience fact is that the other scents are filtered through something called the thalamus like a part of your brain, like a sights and everything go, go into your brain, go to the thalamus and then get filtered to other parts of your brain. But the olfactory nerve is super old. It's like an older structure. So it doesn't get filtered through anything. It just mm-hmm. straight. So it, mm-hmm. scent really is like one of the most powerful um, senses. It's cool. That's really interesting. Yeah. Didn't know I was going to get a science lesson today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just remembered it when I learned, I learned it in college and I was like, how does, I, I love that, mm-hmm. um, that fact. Okay, so shall we move on to our next prompt? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so this next prompt is to pick a scent or several and write a scene around it. So we do this a lot well, with words where we'll say like, okay, we're going to give you two words and try to write a scene around the words like, I don't know, pumpkin and cat or whatever. Um, but this time I'm giving you some scents and you don't have to put all of them together. Um, like this isn't a challenge where you try to work all of the words into one sentence and then you're like, cool, done. I used to teach middle school and kids are for sure do that sometimes. They're like, cool, I put them all in a sentence. It sort of makes sense. Like I'll just, <laughs> you know, I'll be like out for the rest of the time. But try to work, like try to build a whole scene inspired by one of these things or work them in gradually throughout it. So here are some suggested scents that I came up with. Orange peel, old books, cinnamon, sweat, nail polish. And those are just ones that popped into my head. Um, but of course you should use whichever inspire you. So pick one or several and try to work it into a scene or work a scene around it. Yeah, so, oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you picked pumpkins and cats and Jordan. I just want to say that somebody in the chat was uh, admiring your pumpkin, your pumpkin wall. So. <laughs> That is why I picked pumpkins and cats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering why there are so many of my favorite things in this suddenly. <laughs> um, uh, and so we'll drop that. We'll drop the prompt into the chat. Mm-hmm. All right, Catherine, you'll do that. Or I can yep. Do and it'll also be in the video description too, if you want to refer back to it. Cool. Um, and maybe let's do, sometimes we'll do 10 minutes in the middle. Sometimes we do eight. I feel like maybe we could do 10. Yeah, let's do it. 10 minutes. And again, if you hate this prompt, ignore it. If you'd like to keep writing what you wrote in the previous 
um, prompt to do that. Um, the only important thing is that you're using this time to write. Yep. That's it. <laughs> Get back into that creative brain, brain space and ready for camp. Um, all, right. all right. So 10 minutes, um, pick a scent and write a scene about it. And let's go ahead and start now.
five minutes left or halfway through. about a minute left.
All right, time's up. Go ahead and wrap up what you're writing. Um, I see some people have already been dropping um, what they wrote or how they used uh, the prompt in the chat. Um, so keep that coming. I love, love seeing that. Um, you can also share how many words you wrote during that sprint if you want. Um, yeah. Did you pick one of your suggestions to write about, Mariah? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just kind of continuing thinking, like I was following the paths that I had started thinking about in the, the previous prompt. Um, sometimes I do the prompts, sometimes I, I get stuck on one and want to keep doing it. I mean, that's what they're there for, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm a nano rebel. <laughs> so rebellious you know <laughs> um so did you did you all i don't have anything to share right so, <laughs> but do you <laughs> i'm gonna punt that back over to you <laughs> um i so yeah i was working on my my werewolf story and i was trying to imagine how they would smell humans and what humans would smell like to them so that's kind of what Yay. i would like writing around for, for something like that that's a great thought you know like a werewolf would have a much more heightened sense of smell so that's something you'd really have to you know ideally you would want to incorporate because you know we may take it for granted but they wouldn't that would be one of their primary sense uh yeah. senses so that was fun <laughs> well i had fun too i um i was really intrigued by what you said mariah about um the sense of smell being so ancient and it reminded me of something I read recently, which um, I apologize if this is a little morbid, but I read that like one of the last things you, senses that you have when you're dying is your sense of hearing, you know? Mm. And so I was just, I got into the, the thought about um, the senses and, and each of them kind of like in isolation. And so I was actually writing like from the perspective of like an AI, like an artificial being whose senses were coming on like one at a time. Oh, that's cool. And just, yeah, like isolating, you know, each one individually. So that was fun. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. So thank you, Mariah. That that was very inspiring. Yeah, of course. Um, did did either of you ever read the book um, All the Light We Cannot See? Yes. So ha ha there's two main characters, and then one of them is blind. So it really is like. I read that book and then I remember writing something else and I had, I just was like totally focusing on all these other senses. And then I was like, Oh, my character can see. So I should probably include like some of these too, but I just gotten so deep into this idea of like all, um, all these other ways of experiencing the world. Hmm. Um, yeah. Kate L says, I wrote about old books and sweat and wow, that thought train pulled into angst station really fast. <laughs> my main character visits the study where she fell in love with her now ex. That's really funny. Um, while people are sharing things, because I see more po popping in, I thought we could, um, sorry, I just, I lost the, I have too many tabs open. It's like, I'm going to write a memoir of my, of my <laughs> time right now. And it's going to be called, I have too many tabs open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Catherine, this is your idea. You thought we could maybe talk a little bit about um, if, if we, or if any of you who are watching, I remember a passage from a book where the author described something so well it felt like you were there or that you could see or hear or smell, taste or feel it. And when you asked that question, when we were planning this virtual write-in, the first thing that popped into my mind um, was the, oh my God, what are they called? The Turkish Delight from mm. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which I read when I was very young. I had no idea what Turkish Delight was. And it mm. seemed like the most fantastic thing like it seems like the most fantastic food in the world. And I wanted to try it for years. Um, wow. And it really stuck with me. It's just like, and I still haven't tried it. I've seen it at Berkeley Bowl, um, <laughs> but I, I've heard it's not very good. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I probably wouldn't like Maybe it. it wouldn't live up to your not. imagination. Also what I heard. Yeah. Actually, the one I was thinking, I was thinking about was food too, because um, I really loved all the red wall books when yeah. I was, when I was a kid and, and there would just be, these long passages like describing the feasts that they would have and like strawberry cordial and like deeper than ever beetroot pie and, like just all these amazing dishes and I actually I recently got a Redwall cookbook <laughs> that has wow. like recipes for 
for the things um, that they make in those. So I, I made some I made some soup from it and it was very good. Was it good? It was. Did the author like invent those recipes themselves? Uh, I'm not I'm not sure. I I think he might have worked with somebody else to like yeah. to make them happen. But they, the That's the cookbook was really cool. cute because yeah. there was like a little story throughout. Anyway, yeah, I love that. Um, so to, just to share some some people. So Mandy Berry says that they wrote as the teenager teenage vampire protagonist of their work in progress. Um, getting a headache from the scent of clear nail polish. <laughs> I love that. I love that too. Um, and it, it makes me think about how like including a smell just to like build up a world is one thing, but including a smell that then like has an effect on a character is more mm -hmm. like how things kind of happen in real life, right? Like you smell, you know, like I smell my housemates shampoo and it, it makes me think of them or like it reminds me of this other time you know like it always is bringing yeah. up other thoughts or, or actions or Absolutely. Um, there's a question here from valeria um that says i'm actually planning to publish a book before the end of 2022 but i'm still on the first draft but i'm a severe under writer and need help bulking up my word count any tips um i feel like this is the exact question for NaNoWriMo writers of how do you write more words? Um, I feel I feel like describing like like what we're doing right now, like sort of in depth describing smells and and you know other senses too and tastes and like going into details in these little like essentially world building elements um, is one of the things that can help bulk up your work out. If anybody yeah. has any tips. So I think that I think that it can be very overwhelming to try to be like figuring out your whole story at once. And if you do what seem like really random exercises like this, it, it can be surprisingly inspiring. You know, you you get off on a tangent, you think it has nothing to do with anything, and suddenly it plugs in somewhere to something, you know, else that you had in mind for your story. And and you can take that as an angle, you know, to to work your way into your story. And and yeah, so, so I think often, especially for me, like um, just trying to do small things that, that almost seem unrelated because they, they don't have any preconceptions of like what they have to be can really be helpful to me. <laughs> and then I can later on just take what I like from that, if anything, or, or just use it as a, as a way to just kind of get myself, you know, get the momentum going. I would also like, if you want to sit like that writer, you said Valeria, like sitting down because people underwrite things in different ways you know like so you could I'm not quite sure maybe it means like anyway if you sit down with what you already have written and you go through it and you have like different colored pens and you're like this is when I for when I use dialogue this is for when I do description this is for when I do sensory details this is for when I do internal monologue and you can kind of start to see like which areas um are really lacking and then deciding if you did that on purpose or if you're like oh like this scene is underwritten because, you know, it just bounces from dialogue to dialogue and, and that there's no scene setting at all. So I'm going to spend more time like describing and getting, getting like a second opinion on that is really good as well. Like I shared a story once and people were like, I love all the dialogue, but like, I feel really lost in space. And I was like, Oh, I didn't, I could picture it clearly, but I didn't do a great job of communicating that. So I really, you know, wrote more in those, in that area. Um, Cause I, and then also deciding like, some places don't need you know some places shouldn't have that much writing in it you know like you don't want to spend like unless you're writing red wall you don't you maybe don't want to spend like an hour describing their breakfast <laughs> or maybe you do, but maybe you do want to you realize like oh I really glossed over this scene that needs a lot of emotional impact and that's where I really need to spend more time yeah. bulking that that section up um okay so we've got 16 minutes left should we do our final prompt yeah, let's go for it. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can you still hear me? Yep. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I have too many tabs open, and my computer yeah. was, just had a moment where it was like, oh, and it just shut its eyes, and everything <laughs> went black, and but now it's back together. Okay. So for our last prompt, speaking about smells triggering, you know, memories or, or other um, feelings, this prompt is to write a scene where a scent triggers a powerful memory. 
And mm -hmm. based on some of the stuff you all have been sharing in the chat, some people have already been doing this, like a smell of books and sweat reminding their main character of, you know, an ex-boyfriend. Or... So this one is just like pick a scent, maybe one you've already written about, maybe something you've already started and follow it down like memory lane back and back and back. And if that prompt is not inspiring to you, feel free to keep writing any of the things you started earlier or something totally different. Shall we do another 10? Yeah, let's do it. I feel like these write-ins are so good for me to just like <laughs> get into the groove of, of writing again, so. And <laughs> even if you didn't write anything else today, like you've got these words, which is cool. Yeah. And you've been thinking about it, yeah. All right. All right. Um, so I'll set my timer for 10 minutes. Um, writing about a scent that triggers a powerful memory. And let's go ahead and start now.
five minutes left. Halfway there. about a minute left. Time's up. Go ahead and wrap up with your writing. Um, as always, you can put an excerpt of what you wrote in the chat. 
um, or how many words you wrote during that sprint. Um, you can also write how many words you got during this entire write-in. Sometimes it's a lot of fun to, to see um, how, just how much you did write uh, during, during the hour, so. How'd that go for y'all? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling so tired. <laughs> I'm not feeling, but I was, I spent some time just um, imagining the main character in my story, but in the future, looking back on, on what smells would trigger memories. Hmm. Just, just, you know what I mean? Like thinking like, what are these, what are these smells going to mean later to her? Cause she oh, starts out as a younger person in the novel. And then I was like going through and kind of listing them. And it really put me in a kind of mood that like they, they're just so evocative, I think. Um, and then I was following that path a little bit. But the mine is kind of set in a circus at the turn of the century. So at the turn of the 20th century. Oh. First century, which is something. It was also historical fiction at this point, right? It's like 21 years ago. Um, but so that there's a lot of smells thinking about but if you ask me how many words not so many i was mostly <laughs> listing things and writing notes to myself yeah i'm doing more of the same i, I didn't have anything totally um coherent but i was just thinking about you know what smells do um are anchored to very specific memories and that's just such a fun exercise because it's not something that i usually do think about mm. but um like one of the ones that came to mind for me, I, I had the opportunity to visit a friend of mine in Belgium once and he took me out at night. It was really freaking cold. It was, you know, like November or something. And they had these little kiosks here and there. There were lights everywhere. It was just beautiful. But they, they had these kiosks that were selling honeyed wine. Mm. And, you know, I had never thought about doing something as simple as putting honey in wine. <laughs> But it was hot. It was warmed wine with honey in it. And I think some spices and stuff. And oh my God, it was just amazing. And so just, you know, whenever I smell like honey or, or those spices, I'm just like immediately transported in my mind back to that spot where I was standing with him. And it's just an amazing, you know, memory to have. It's really neat. Mm -hmm. I like um, Hillary McDonald in the chat um, wrote, the scent of wisteria drifts through the open window, instantly transporting me into the past. It had mm. been late spring then as well, with blossoms releasing a final burst of fragrance before wilting. Um, mm. Which I feel it's kind of it's kind of a similar similar vibe. The the wisteria yeah. bringing you back to a time that was that was similar. Yeah, that's that's actually another thing that I was thinking about was how many um, smells are very specific to seasons. You know, that really helps um, mm. set the scene of the time of year. You know, whether it's like something hot that you're drinking in the wintertime or, you know, barbecue in the summer, you know, things like that. Yeah. Miss C.K. wrote 111 words and said they were writing about the swimming pool and summer smells, which I <laughs> just the swimming pool smell. Oh, my gosh. We could probably have spent a whole ride in. Oh, yeah. You know, I know. One smell and following I like that. I just I my nose just had a phantom scent of like sunscreen. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. thinking about summer smells. Chlorine. <laughs> yeah. Um, Robin Wilkinson said, um, oh, they split it into two pieces, I think. Pine branches adorned her father's casket along with flowers. Mary had forgotten what kinds of flowers there were. The pine was what drew her. The sap was so thick she could smell it from the back of the church when she had entered and again when she left. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I love the smell of pine. Yeah. That's a great one. Um, and... Rocket Joe 86 says, I think the smell that triggers most of my memories is the dusty smell of fine sand, like the smell of the desert. Mm. Um, and Arala of the Vale says, whenever I smell cicada, cicada, it reminds me of long holidays in Turkey. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I love all these smells. Thank you for sharing this like smelly virtual writing with us. <laughs> uh, what a great idea, Mariah. I don't think I ever would have thought of that. Yeah. Um, I hope I... I really dig it, and I'm. I hope you guys are digging it too. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, we're out of time. I just wanted to remind people if you if you don't know what camp is and you feel like writing with us this April, definitely check out the link in the description of the video, along with uh, the Nano Finmo resources, which are all about finishing a novel that you've already started. Um, we've got this group match making out, and also subscribe. 
one time Tim, who's the other program director, said, smash that subscribe button and like being like a little bit ironic. But now every time I say subscribe in the back of my head, I hear him saying that. So. <laughs> smash, smash that subscribe button, please. I miss the, one of the things I miss about not having the virtual write-ins in the office is that we don't have his laugh in the background. <laughs> oh, sure. Tim's got such a great laugh. Um, other than that, we'll see you all hopefully next week. Same time, right? Same time, same place? I think so. Yeah. Awesome. Let's do it. And next week will Thank be you, everyone. the last day before April. So one more day to get some planning in before jumping into your um, Camp April project. Yeah. Yay. All right. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And we'll see you later. Thank you for all your comments. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Okay.